right guys, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is very pertinent to survival and something that I think is worth talking about and that is an honest to God breakdown of what I consider the bare minimum for survival stuff, like a survival setup. It's basically the stuff that I don't go into the wilderness without. Now to be fair and to kind of lead into this, I think it's important to note that you know under optimal conditions and situations and of course allowances, it would be optimal to have have a full backpack similar to the bushcrafting backpack you've seen many times on here. My Camelback Lynch pin usually has a myriad of different survival goodies in it and it usually has full on food, cooking, um, like a mess kit, you know, it has enough paracord to build a small shelter in and of itself, right? So there's a lot of really good merit to having a well-equipped survival slash bushcrafting backpack, especially if you're planning to go outside, especially if you're planning to spend any time in the wilderness. However, I think that it's really important to know without becoming a hypocrite that a lot of times when you want to go say mountain biking, uh, ultralight backpacking, when you want to go rock climbing. There's a lot of, and I do mean truthfully, a lot of really fun outdoor activities, most of which I participate in, where having a full-on wilderness survival setup just isn't reasonable or feasible. Once again, you know, if you're doing things like rock climbing, you are not going to be bringing a large backpack with you for survival. Specifically, if you're going to be mountain biking, you know, downhill mountain biking is a lot of fun and a lot of people do it in very remote areas, myself included. And so there's always this balance of how do I have survival equipment and gear, <clears throat> but also how do I strike a reasonable level of preparedness. And so today we're going to be going over that and talking about what I consider my reasonable level of preparedness equipment for the wilderness. So first off, we're going to go over kind of the basics for what I consider the bare minimum. And so first off, the first three components are right here. All of these outside of kind of this large PSK are very pocket friendly. And usually with the PSK, whether I'm doing something like downhill mountain biking, cross country mountain biking, whether I'm doing something like rock climbing, this PSK is very, very easy to strap to the small of my back. And what I find very important about that is that I can strap this, as you can see, to the small of my back and it doesn't really weigh me down. It doesn't really, you know, get in my way. But I also have medical equipment here, such as band-aids, gauze. Um, I have things like Benadryl in here, uh, anti-ish cream, stuff like that. And then inside here, and I've had to use in the past multiple things from here. And so we have paracord, cliff bars, instant coffee. We have containers, uh, mylar blankets, um, all kinds of goodies in here. And once again, I have actually used some of this stuff, um, not necessarily in a full-blown survival situation but a lot of it like say you end up getting really hungry and you're on you know a full you know mountain biking trip you just don't have any more food or you're just absolutely you know at your limit you need something to carry on and so having stuff like you know a couple cliff bars in here can actually really help um, not so much physically change your survival situation, but a lot of it goes back to your mental game. And you know, having a few extra hundred calories or a quick little caloric boost can give you the boost to actually get you out of some situations. So anyways, the personal survival kit, I have more videos detailing this specifically, but the PL, or sorry, the PSK is something that I do not leave home without. As you can see this one, I'm not lying because it is incredibly dirty. It's physically a very dirty pack, but there is basically everything you needed here for rudimentary survival with a few add-ons. So next up we have the personal locator beacon. So these two are harnessed together. I have this um, personal locator beacon here on here with, or I should say daisy chained with some paracord, of course, orange paracord for high viz. And then I leave it kind of loose and floppy like this so that this can be easily grabbed and ripped if I need to. So I try to keep it pretty streamlined so it doesn't get accidentally, you know, like uh, grabbed on any branches or anything like that. But so far I have legitimately cross country mountain biked with this over 20 miles and it still holds up just fine. And once again, I think having this 
little bit of an extra long tail. It doesn't particularly matter because I place this on the small of my back, so it's not really brushing up against a lot of brush. But anyways, the personal locator beacon is another thing that once again, if you're going to be especially operating in any kind of wilderness environment where ease of getting in and out is not there. So, you know, that can be a lot of places in Alaska, but also places like the Rocky Mountains, um, the Appalachian Mountains are also going to be another good place for personal locator beacons. Pretty much regardless though, personal locator beacons are something that I really don't see enough survivalists talking about and they're an absolute game changer and once again there's several brands out there this is a rescue link acr 400 but there are also spots garmin in reaches and a handful of other plbs out there but it's absolutely worth having at least a plb with you because if you get into a situation where you break your leg if you don't have anyone there with you to get you out or you know, to get you assistance you can shoot off a you know signal with your personal locator beacon that gives you a detailed um, or gives search and rescue a detailed idea of where you're at now a kind of stopgap between things like a personal locator beacon and you know um, nothing is a GPS and so I like GPS's because oftentimes you get turned around in the woods I usually am pretty good with my situational awareness and keeping my bearings but even the best of us can get um, turned around and confused so it's very important to have something to help with that so as I was saying, the next thing is a GPS. So GPSs are going to help you, like I said, if you do get turned around, if you do get a little lost, a little confused, um, the GPS is going to be a really big helper for being able to make sure that you can write yourself, orient yourself, and get you going in the right direction. And of course, these are not infallible, and I usually do carry at least two extra sets of batteries for this and of course carry them in a watertight waterproof um, baggie typically so that's usually what i do with my gps once again not the world's best solution and of course you can also carry physical maps and depending where you're at you may have to carry a physical map as well so that kind of helps with navigation and emergency location and i think once again between a plb and a some form of GPS, you know, solid GPS, you're going to be pretty well set because the biggest thing about survival situations is really focusing on how do I get out of a situation um, as opposed to, you know, trying to outlast or last the longest per se. So those are going to be, <coughs> those are going to be the most immediate concerns or the most present concerns to address. So aside from that is going to be tools. Now tools is going to be one of the most difficult areas because once again, depending on what exactly you're doing, not all of these tools are going to be highly relevant or applicable to what your exact uh, needs are. And once again too, you will have to fluctuate these. So if you are going out mountain biking, having spare tires, a, a tire inflator of some sort like a pump is going to be necessary for the well-being of your equipment for that particular application whereas given you know let's say if you're going rock climbing you're going to have other you know pieces of equipment that you are going to need to carry so we're not necessarily going to be breaking down into specific you know like mountain biking or rock climbing but of course you will need specific things for that however unfortunately things like knives and stuff are not very applicable to those actual um, given kind of outdoor activities however I still do make sure to carry at least these base tools. So for sure for me, a full tang, reasonably tough, reasonably durable, um, durable fixed blade is going to be first up on my list. With a knife, you can do just about anything in the wilderness. And so making sure that you have something that you can baton, once again, something that's typically going to be full tang or at least very robust, something like a cold steel SRK. This is a Demco Knives Free Rain in particular. And the Free Rain is very, very similar to the SRKs. I think it's a little bit better in a few ways, once again, particularly being full tang. And I do like the steel on this one a little bit more, um, at least at base level. This is an OS 10 a as opposed to the SK5 high carbon of a stock SRK. But either way you slice it, you're going to want something that's going to be a reasonable size, it's going to be durable, and something you can use to do things such as batoning and you know shelter building, fire starting, the basic rudimentary survival um, 
kind of tasks. So a robust survival knife is going to be first up on the list. Now the next one is going to fluctuate. I'm either going to carry what I would consider a pocket friendly saw, something like a 210 Gomboy um, from Silky is going to be a really good move if you're wanting to go with a specific dedicated tool. And I think between a you know reasonably robust knife and a saw, there's really not much that you cannot do. However, once again, something like a gomboy might not always be super applicable. So usually what I will do if I'm not going to go the route of carrying up a full on like um, small saw, what I'll do is carry a multi-tool. Something like the Leatherman Arc or something like my Leatherman Charge typically in the past is what I had been carrying. And with it, you do get a small saw. So. <clears throat> You guys can see here, you get a small saw, you also get a secondary blade, so a blade to complement your primary, and then of course you get more practical tools, things like pliers, um, screwdrivers, and I think those things can honestly really um, be important because a lot of, once again, what you're doing can be done, or at least, you know, accessories can be modified, you can work on things with something like a multi-tool. So multi-tools make a lot of sense in the outdoors, even if they do have primarily, you know, things like screwdrivers on them. There's a lot of things, equipment that we end up carrying that are very useful to have worked on with a multi-tool. So typically I will carry something like a multi-tool and a uh, robust fixed blade because between these two, there's not a whole lot I can't do, especially if I'm not going to be carrying something like a saw. So. Once again, going back to it, those are going to be primarily the most realistic tools. Something like a, you know, Leatherman plier-based multi-tool and then a full-on fixed blade. With those two, you should have most of your bases honestly covered. Now, moving into the last portion, it is going to be a firearm. Now, this may not be the physical last portion because typically speaking, when I'm doing things outdoors, I'm going to have a firearm handy and typically it's going to be on like a chest rig or something like that. And for me, this one is the Springfield Prodigy. Of course, I have a 20 round magazine loaded with 147 grain um, hard cast lead bullets. So these are going to give me a little bit better um, outdoor performance when it comes to things like wild animals. And it's not going to be the end all to beat all, but once again, really prioritizing things like carryability here. It's going to give you a good fighting chance in case you encounter something while you're out mountain biking, while you're out rock climbing, while you're out doing the things that we typically do. And once again, if I'm specifically going to be hunting, if I'm going to be specifically you know, doing camping, survival, but craft and I'm going to hunker down, choose a more robust system, then I'm more likely going to choose something like a 44 Magnum revolver. But if I'm just going out for like a bike ride or I'm just wanting to do something where I need that a little bit higher level of agility, having something like this guy to throw on a chest rig is going to be a really nice, um, or it's going to have, it's a nice ability to have that. So that, in my opinion, kind of um, summarizes the most important and most realistic survival kind of setup, especially for me and myself, because once again, with survival, you have to have a kit that you can not only use effectively, but it has to be a balance of useful and applicable, and also something that you're going to want to carry. You can have the best, once again, like best and most well set up wilderness, bushcrafting, backpack with all the goodies in it, but if you're not realistically going to carry that, then I think it makes more sense to streamline things into things like like a handgun into things like a PSK into things like just a fixed blade you know survival knife things that you can use realistically to affect your survival if and when you need it but things that are also not going to interfere with with ultimately what you're doing so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always God bless and I'm